Okay guys, are you ready to celebrate your loved ones more than we already have? I think I have a really interesting fun project. This is going to be a three part video series, a little mini series here this week. And part one is today, part two will be tomorrow, and part three the day after that. Alright, so today I just want you to spend some time thinking about which loved one or loved ones, plural, that you want to celebrate and I want you to gather some stuff together, yes? So here are some things on my table. I'm gonna move them so they're in camera. Some new, some old, that I'm going to use. The basis for this is gonna be this. This is a savings book from Bank of America from, what year? Uh, 1956 <laughs> from my grandmother and these were found in her estate and we are going to use this as the basis for making a little sort of mini, mini um, remembrance journal or you know mini um, I don't know what to call it but we're going to use special pieces to remember loved ones some of from my grandmother some from other people like these recipes are friend of from a friend of mine's estate that passed away these are not all from my grandmother this particular piece is actually from my grandfather, her husband, he smoked, and these are cigarette silks. Um, for those who don't know, you used to be able to buy cigarettes that would come with trading cards or these little pieces of fabric. Uh, my grandfather was also in, in the produce business. My family has a long history in the grocery business and produce. And whenever we stayed at grandma and grandpa's house, they, uh, grandpa always came home from work with a watermelon always. So I happened to find this one right on top that had a watermelon. So that was very much meant to be, right? All right. So she always also had her little sweater sets, right? The little tiny, um, you know, uh, crew neck or scoop neck um, under a little sweater with the cardigan on top. She always had them and a skirt. She almost never wore pants. So I have some old sweaters here that we can cut up and use some of that fabric. I also have some bins. You can see the edge of the bins here. Uh, one has um, trims and scraps and the bottom one has distressed and antique vintage fabrics in it. I also have some pieces of fabric from some of her old house coats. So I want you to spend some time. I want you to gather your pieces in remembrance of your loved ones. I also have another doily. And we are going to make a little mini journal and um, we are going to have fun with the process. I am also going to print some pictures from our old family photos file that we have on the internet. And I'm going to print them to use as part of this process. So print your pictures, gather your supplies, and meet me in the next video. Guys, we are all right, this is like part 1A <laughs> of this remembrance booklet journal project. Don't know exactly what to call it, but I think I'll figure it out hopefully before the video posts. So anyway, as I am Looking at the pile of things I've collected on the desk and while I was printing the photos, getting out some books here that belonged to my grandmother that were in her collection, you know, things like that, the project started to morph into something different and kind of take on its own life. I fully expected that to happen, by the way, and it did. I So we're going to start today with working on this little uh, bank savings account bank booklet. I do think it's going to be part of a bigger book, which we're going to start making in part two. We'll do the cover in part two, and then part three we'll finish it up. So I'm going to take some of this stuff and kind of put it aside out of the way. All right, and we're going to take our little bank booklet and I don't want to cover up 
all of the old writings that are in here or stamps or anything. I find them interesting, so I want to keep some of them. I was going to use my bag of stamps here, and I still may do that. Um, because I do think I want to like just glue some stamps and things into the inside of here. But I do have a bunch of envelopes from my grandmother's collection of things um, that have stamps on them. So I think that it would actually be better to maybe use some of these stamps. So where are my scissors? I'm going to actually take the whole postmark. Now, I do have some rubber stamps out here and some ink. I'm not exactly sure what color of ink I want to use. Um, I have archival ink. I have sepia, potting soil, and I just bought potting soil, and I just bought watering can. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, we're going to get out a glue stick. We're going to treat this sort of like a grab and glue, but we're going to, this is a brand new one, does the other one have glue? Maybe finish up the other stick first. We're going to treat this sort of like a grab and glue, only we're going to use vintage papers and other such items. I kind of need a scrap of paper. Uh, or plastic. Plastic will work. Desk is a mess again, you guys. Um, okay. So the idea is for me to grab bits and pieces and put them in here. Now, my grandmother, this is one of her little Bible, many little Bibles we found in her stash. Um, and this actually has her maiden name in it. So this is one she had from before she got married. And it is in Italian. I have no idea what the print is. I don't know what the print um, publication date on it. It in the back it says 1929, 15th December 1929, and yeah, you know it's old because it says her phone number is Delaware 9380. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to show you guys is we found after she passed that she we kind of knew this about her before. She put all sorts of bits and pieces in all sorts of places. So. Almost all the books in her library um, all had things tucked in them, whether they're prayer cards or I think in this case, in this one, there's some dried flowers. Yeah, dried flowers. So I do think we're going to use some of these uh, 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 in this journal. And this one actually on the back of it says her name, Jenny, maiden name is Lucarati, um, and it has the original name, G-E-N-I. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it was changed when she came over. I was always told it was something that happened uh, on Ellis Island, which isn't true. It may have happened on the ship. It may have been a choice her parents made. I'm not actually sure. I actually like the original um, spelling of her name. I always intended to take some of these pieces out and use them in some art. There's more flowers tucked in here. I don't know exactly what's in here. So all the books, I've got a few books here on the table that have different things in them. I kind of like that white flower. Where'd that white flower go? There it is. Let's pull this one out. See, there's all sorts of bits and pieces tucked away. Here's a note, just says notebook. And she has different, um, I don't know if they're scapulars, I'm not sure what they are. They're on felt. Um, they're just safety pins to the cover page. 
And this has notes, mostly in Italian. That I'm, oop, see? There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's all in Italian. No idea what it says. And this is from 1938, and it, she has Jenny Bronzini, which means she was already married. So, I have no idea. She kept a lot of notes on a lot of different things, and she never, there you go, piece of crochet. She never threw many, any of them away. <clears throat> and especially in the early days, they were in Italian, because that was her native language. Here's another one, a rosary prayer book. And they all, see, they all have things... tucked inside. So okay, we're going to start with these few little pieces here. I think we're going to take two of these short pages here and I think, yeah, we're going to make it a pocket. Let's get out my tiny attacher. I like this thing. Okay, so let's make it a pocket. And I just took my asthma medicine and had some coffee, so my hands are a little bit shaky. So I like that, you know, I can just tuck, I can just tuck this in right here. I like that. Okay. I think I want to do something like that with this flower. So let's get out some matte gel and a little brush. I like the matte medium, Liquitex matte fluid matte medium, because it dries pretty quickly. I don't know what these flowers were from. The romantic in me would like to th me to think that there may be flowers that my grandfather gave her while they were courting. I don't know that that's true, but she was very sentimental that way, so my guess is if she saved them, they were from something like that. I'm going to cut the stem right there so that it'll fit in the fold of the seam of the book a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. So I'm going to keep going like that and adding little bits and pieces to this little tiny bank book. And I will be speeding forward through it for a little bit. Feel free to ask me questions should you have them. And... Again, this is part of the My Year 2017 Facebook group, and um, this is for July, and we are um, celebrating our loved ones. I am choosing to use old vintage family papers as part of that and create these fun little books. So I want you to think about trying something new and experimenting with what you have around. I'm going to I'm going to work on this little book. I'm going to speed through part of the process and I'll be right back. I said I was going to fast forward through the process. I lied. <laughs> I'm not going to. All right. So we're going to get out some of my rubber stamps. If you don't know, I have my own line of rubber stamps and you can get them in my Etsy shop. The link is in the description below. I have a particular one from a particular set that I want to use I think. So this set here and this is set number 11. So let's pull this out. And the first thing I need is a stamp block. Here we go. I'll just use that one and I think I want to use this one. This little one. It's a nice size for this small um, journal. So the next thing we're going to do is open these two new stamp pads and compare it and the sepia one that I already had. 
on some of this old paper and see this aged paper and see which one that color wise I prefer. I have a feeling it's going to be potting soil. I just have a feeling. So I'm going to actually use that one last. Um, I'm going to take some of this old recipe paper, which is from a friend, a different person that I knew who's passed away. Um, her name was Verna May. And this really luscious, juicy, antiqued pad of paper with recipes on it. Mm, that gray one is kind of nice. That's watering can. See that? Alright. Let's try sepia. Whoop. Sepia. I just knocked a bunch of stuff on the floor. <laughs> I think this sepia is too red for what I want, but it's nice. I do like the sepia. That's why I have it in such a big pad. Okay, this is a watering can. Now the archival inks are waterproof, which is why I like them. And I think the pads work a little better and are a little juicier than um, stays on. Okay, and this is potting soil. So I really could go with any of these. Any of them would work. I kind of like the gray one, watering can. How funny is that? Because I thought it was going to be this one. All right, so we're going to go with watering can. I'll pick up my stuff off the floor. Okay, so I did dry this. We're going to go back to that first page. And zoom in. There we go. So I do think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and stamp a little bit on all the pages. Now because I want this to fit back into the little um, envelope it came out of, I don't want to make it too bulky or too thick because then it won't fit. Okay. Alrighty. So we have this and this. Now I do have where's the rest of that envelope? has all this beautiful old writing on it and I love the way it just set the address is sort of incomplete compared to how we would do it today right I love that so let's get this off of here I might have to use this in the other part of the journal. I'd really love to use it, but it's really too big. I do have an idea though. I where are my two little boxes of the old jewel old, old rosary parts? Um, okay, so I have this one little, I think this used to have a medallion in it, but it's missing. I have this one. St. 
chewed. I think we're going to use some of these in there. And this won't be the last time you see these little boxes. Well, you're going to see them again. This is like a book plate or something. It says something in Latin, I'm sure. Catholic Action Youth Rome. I don't know what it means. I just found it in here. Let's see. Oh, there's something inside of here. Oh, the nails. That's cute. It's in the original glycine bag. So maybe we might use that too. My desk is a mess already, people. Like, this is what happens when I work on a project like this. I have, like, all the parts out. Okay. So, here we go. I think I want to put... Yeah, I think what I want to do... Is I think I want to first attach this little tiny... You see that? Whoops. Whoops, there we are. Can you focus? Focus. There we go. Little tiny, I don't think that's what belonged on there, but we're gonna attach that to there. Oops, missed. That didn't work. You know what? I think I need to get a little teeny tiny brad out. All right, let's do that. I'll be right back. I put it on there with a little brad. Oops. Where am I? Either way. Yeah. So let's use, we're going to use the Turbo Tacky because it dries fast. Ish. I'm going to glue it here. This used to be a little envelope of some sort. It's not going to be that anymore. Oh, oh, oh. 